Hello friends, we are out working with the Nikon P1000 right now. We are going to take some portraits as soon as that big old sun goes down a little bit because we have no clouds in the sky today, so it is super harsh lighting. So we're waiting on the sun to get far enough down on the horizon so that um, I don't have to squint basically in the portraits. Raymond is going to be taking the portraits with this of me and I figured let's bring you along a little bit. So in the video I will share a few of the portraits that came along plus members there will be a video and gallery of of all the photos for you uh, linked down below. However in this video I want to discuss taking portraits with a camera with a very small sensor. So we are going to be looking for a lot of separation so that we can get me within the depth of field but my background outside of it so that at least the background will be at least somewhat blurred out. So we'll do a few different experiments around here. We will do some shots where I'm closer to the background, some shots where I'm further away from the background, and you can see the difference. I'm also working on the review of this. That will be coming up hopefully later this week. Okay, so our first setup here is, <laughs> Raymond's right there, <laughs> and then I'm gonna go out a little ways. Our, we're gonna have to be balancing the uh, our zoom, because at a certain point on the P1000, the photos start to get less and less clear as, as you zoom in. So I've told Raymond, let's keep it around 100 to 200 millimeters. He says, yep, that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go, you can see that there's a lot of stuff back there, but there's a decent amount of separation. So let's see what happens. So here's what happened. Immediately, Raymond went outside the 100 to I changed the plan right years. away. Well, it's just not, you're, because of the small sensor, yeah. and it, it is still pretty close. It's not like, you know, there's these like horror stories of portraits that were taken like too far away with like a telescope and stuff. It looks fine. It looks absolutely fine. And at 600 millimeters, it felt not, you know, without doing the math. Uh, with 600 millimeters, the, the background felt a little more like f5.6 on a full frame. wasn't quite f2.8 or f4, oh, but yeah, yeah, it's pleasing. Yeah, yeah. It just it just requires an adjustment. It's just the sensor's different. The ap widest aperture is limited, so you go as close as you can. At it didn't hurt that we did a head and shoulder shot because I could go be closer to you at 600 millimeters. The background was only that the tree that you can see most prominently in the picture was only about 25 yards behind you. It's not like it had to be a mile away or something like mm -hmm. that. We're going to do some of those with those mountains back there, but so far so good. Yeah. What we need to do now is test out in the shade a little bit because it, so far we've been in uh, <laughs> harsh lighting yeah, conditions. Yeah, it's still going to be just, like the an hour. Just, <laughs> Usually there's clouds time. over there. Yeah. So there's that, but also... Uh, I did want to mention that I do have a video on kind of working with um, a deeper depth of field because sometimes that's all you have. Sometimes all you have is, even if it's a, a crop sensor camera, sometimes all you have is your kit lens. So it might be, you know, you might be shooting it up. 5.6 or 6.3 or something and you have lots of things in focus so I do have a whole video where I discuss um, different things you can do to to still make it work like using a plain background or getting a lot of separation in between your subject and the background so I don't know what Ram is doing right now he's been struck by some inspiration so <laughs> I have to pull them away and we need to take some more photos. Okay, so I did just get a bunch of cactus stuck in my foot, but two lens caps, got it, taken off. <laughs> Round two of photos is going to be me in the shadows right over here. And well, I'm not sure if you can see Raymond, he's over there. So I'm gonna be in the shade. There's some sort of um, some shade, shadow and light behind me. We'll see how it works.
Okay. So we did the photos with me in the shadows and he did push it. He went all the way to 700 millimeters. And then he shifted his position and we got some kind of the most distant background. Um, actually, there's kind of layers of background yeah. behind me, but the most distant are these mountains in the background, the San Francisco peaks. So the things that I have to think about as the model when he is doing something like using a 700 millimeter um, focal length are I need to stay pretty still because it's tough because he's shooting handheld to shoot at 700 millimeters. So he has to be trying to hold his camera still and I need to be staying relatively still as well. <laughs> okay, one more location. Raymond and I decided to come to this lake area because we realized there was one more thing that I talked about in the video that I made before about using kit lenses and stuff for taking portraits um, because, or rather that thing was using kind of an abstract background. And yeah. what did you say water was? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like nature's bokeh. <laughs> if you don't have, like we, we had some liberties before. I could go back 50 yards. Mm -hmm. At 600 millimeters, I was, I don't think I was 50 yards away, but I was probably 25 yards, yards away. We also had a far away background. Well, now we also have this lake, which isn't, isn't as far away. Mm -hmm. And maybe even though I could, well, no, there is a particular- I don't think you're in the frame. There is a particular <laughs> area on the hillside that I want to be, so I can't control all the distances. But by using the water, which is more abstract and smoother, and because of this monstrosity, <laughs> we can get it, we can get the compression where that's going to be a big part of the background. These might just turn out great, even though we don't have that giant sensor to get the really shallow depth of field. Let's find out. Exactly. All right, everybody, let's try to take some photos <laughs> with the lake behind us. Done. <laughs> okay, so we took Ooh, it's chilly. The last few photos down by the lake. And what Raymond and I were kind of talking about as, as the photos are being taken, sorry, <laughs> I have muddy feet at this point. Um, what Raymond and I were talking about was, I got kind of a mixed, a mixed bag of comments when I first told everybody that, that I had this camera in the studio because a lot of people said, oh my gosh, I had the P900, I loved it. Um, I have the P9 or I have the P1000. I love it. But then there's this whole other slew of people who say garbage. <laughs> it's absolute garbage. You can't get a crisp photo. You can't get a good photo. You can't even take photos with it. I feel like some people were telling me, but I think what we've done today is just kind of proven that, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can get good photos with it and you can even get good portraits with it. You do have to get a little bit creative. You don't have um, all of the flexibility that you do with a full frame camera or even an APS-C camera, but you have plenty of flexibility considering that you do have a lot of zoom range. And as long as you use your creativity, put a little separation between um, your subject and the background or use something like a more abstract background, you can get great photos. Yeah, the separation is really the deal. You can throw the formulas yeah. away. The formulas, if you try, you, you go crazy doing the formulas, and <laughs> and then it'll and then you start doing the math and it, it looks like it's not going to work and you just have to yes if, if you have a brick wall three feet behind the person all those bricks are probably going to be in focus but if you're a little creative and you go out in, into the world it i thought i would have to fight it more i thought i would have to fight more to get those nice pleasing blurry backgrounds they're not the best in the world but this is not an f 2.8 lens this is nothing close the aperture range on this is like f uh, it is 2.8 on the super wide end, mm -hmm, but it's and F8 then on the long as end. you get longer and longer, <laughs> it goes to f8. Though I will say, just I'll talk about more about this stuff during the review, but I will say that uh, I expected the aperture to narrow significantly earlier on in the zoom range than it than it ends up. 
doing. Um, and also, I mean, I was taking photos of bunnies and stuff, you know, a month ago with this thing, and I was getting the, the bokeh. So can the P1000 bokeh? Yes. <laughs> yes, it can. It can. <laughs> it can. So thanks for watching, everybody. Members, make sure that you check out the link in the description below for all of the photos taken today, um, at least all the good ones where my eyes were open and all that. And That's most of them. <laughs> mostly good. And also, uh, I'll do a video for you all about editing, how I'm editing these photos. And if you aren't a member, there is a link in the description below. And depending on what your device is that you're watching this, there might be a little join button as well. So check that out. That is how I keep this show up and running. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to you soon with the review of the Nikon P1000. Bye.